political analyst John Keller is here with us in studio to offer his insight on tonight's races. And he's joined by the outgoing Democratic Congressman Joe Kennedy. John. All right. Thanks, David. Thanks, Lisa. And Congressman, thanks very much for being with us. Now, you've spent years working for Democratic candidates around the country. You've got lots of contacts. I saw you out there working your smartphone. What are they telling you about what's going on with this presidential race? Don, I think um, people are excited. Uh, obviously, people are nervous. People have uh, long memories from back from uh, 2016 and the excitement that comes with the years of work and preparation that comes into this election. And with so much at stake, with for I think for many Democrats, the, the values that we hold dear and the, the changes that we want to see, we know that we're not going to see them with four more years of the Trump administration. So they've been working really hard. I think for House races on the whole, people feel pretty good. The, um, there's a lot of confidence there. Um, we are expected to pick up some seats in the House. Um, I think people feel uh, pretty good about uh, the White House. We've obviously got a long night and potentially longer to come as the vote by mail ballots come in over the, uh, the course of the, the next several uh, even days around the country. Uh, and the Senate's going to be tight. So uh, cautious optimism, some nerves out there, but people have worked hard and uh, excited about what this change could bring. Congressman, what do you make of the Biden campaign strategy? There have been critics, even within the Democratic universe, uh, that uh, he laid a little too low in this campaign. There's uh, Donald Trump holding big rallies, a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, and there's Joe Biden uh, talking to uh, a scattering of people socially distanced. Uh, there was a contrast there. Do you think it mattered? Uh yeah, John, I think it mattered because, uh, as I'm sure you saw, a Stanford University study that said over 700 people died as a result of contracting the coronavirus because of the mass rallies that Donald Trump held. Uh, of course there was a difference. You had a, a president that went out on a campaign trail in the midst of a global pandemic and literally infected tens of thousands of fellow Americans because he was putting his own political interests above that of the country. And you had a good and decent public servant whose strength is the personal connection he has with an audience who literally set that aside because he knew it wasn't the best interest of the country even if it wasn't the best interest of his campaign if you if you couldn't think of any other big difference between the two of them and of course there are that should be enough about what is at stake in this election and the quality of the character of the two candidates um, we're talking with congressman joe kennedy joe if joe biden wins whether it's tonight, tomorrow night, a week from now, who knows? We still don't know. What happens to the Democratic Party? I saw uh, Bernie Sanders on cable TV recently saying that uh, if Biden wins, the left is owed a big say in how the administration goes forward. Do you agree with that? And what does that mean? Look, I think we need to get, obviously, uh, Vice President Biden elected. We need to, at the very least, protect a majority in the House. And, John, a lot of that agenda is going to come down to a margin in the Senate and as to whether we are able to flip the Senate. Because if not, and Mitch McConnell is still in charge, obviously a, uh, a large part of that legislative agenda uh, becomes much more challenging to deliver on. And if we are able to flip the Senate, then yes, we have the opportunity to, I think, deliver on so much of what this country has been begging for for a long time. Uh, and I hope and I expect that you're actually going to see a consensus come together because Democrats do believe that everybody should get access to health care in this country. We might have some disagreement within that tent about how to do it, but that's going to be the value that we push. We believe we need to do something about climate. I think you'll see a huge uh, movement on that by a Biden administration. I think you'll see a lot on the economy and, and first up being COVID response. And I think you'll see action on the immigration. So are there going to be some uh, arguments and debates within the family? Of course there are. It's a Democratic Party. There always is. But make no mistake, I think all of us would much prefer to have those arguments rather than looking at four more years of uh, the disaster that has been this, this administration. Well, let's talk a little bit about the other party. You have plenty of Republican friends and contacts sure. that you speak with. Uh, if uh, if President Trump is defeated, is Trumpism gone or does it linger on? And if so, in what way? 
I don't think Trumpism is gone at all. Uh, I think Trumpism is here to stay. Look, re Republican Party, uh, Donald Trump has redefined a Republican Party. Uh, and I think that next chapter of uh, Republican leadership certainly can't uh, just turn the page and pretend like these last four years didn't didn't happen. They're going to rebuild with that at the center of it. And so uh, I expect um, uh, President Trump, whether he is in office or not, and certainly uh, obviously if he's not, but his family, to still play a uh, outsized role in, in Republican politics as they start to chart a path forward. Um, and look, I. Um, uh, I hope, I obviously hope uh, Vice President Biden wins and, and is able to, to recalibrate and, and uh, redirection our country. Um, and I actually hope that for a Republican Party too, um, because what we have seen, um, the, the viciousness and the vitriol that has come from um, this administration uh, and the vilification of our fellow Americans um, and people that are diverse or different, that does no service to our country. Um, so I, I hope that that change happens and happens quickly. Well, you know, I saw James Carville, the famous political consultant on TV, uh, predicting a Biden blowout uh, and likely a Democratic takeover of the Senate. If those two things don't happen, you know, even if Biden should win, but it's not the kind of, of, uh, of blowout that he projected. And if the Republicans hold on to the Senate, basically what changes other than a new president being in office uh, if Trumpism lingers, aren't we due for a rerun of the past four years? No. Um, so I think a couple of things here, uh, John. One, obviously we've seen presidents in modern times become... Um, have their power expanded and so what you see right away is a, a recalibration of the executive orders and, and rules and regulations that a Trump administration has put through unilaterally. I think you see a, a major shift uh, immediately. Um, you obviously see a shift in personnel and, and a vision from, uh, from the White House. You then I think have a choice for Republican Party, right, recognizing the fact that uh, if Vice President Biden wins, you're going to have Democratic candidates that have going to have won, I think, seven of the last eight uh, presidential elections, at least by the popular vote. And a real question for Republicans uh, after, if we are able to increase a majority in the House, as to whether their electoral strategy essentially relies on uh, rural states and less populated states around the country, and whether that is, in fact, a winning coalition for the long run in this country. And I don't think it is. Uh, I think you've got a, a president here that is going to be willing to, and President Biden, um, to try to solve, find solutions for all Americans. I would encourage, obviously, and I hope this happens, that if Republicans do uh, hold the Senate, that they are going to be able and willing to work with a guy who, who served with many of them for decades. And if not now, and if not him, uh, then I think the Republican Party has some real deep soul searching to do uh, about their vision for our country and, and their vision for the future. You know, I got to wonder about bipartisanship and whether it's gone the way of the slinky and the pet rock. <laughs> Uh, because I remember when you first came into Congress eight years ago, you were uh, adamant uh, about promoting bipartisanship. You made friends with re your Republican counterparts in the House. But in recent years, you seem to, if not maybe drift away from that isn't the right term, but you seem to be uh, a little disconsolate about the prospects of that ever really bearing fruit. Is bipartisanship even possible in Washington going forward? John, it is possible, without question. Every bill I ever passed has had to have Republican support, either out of the House or the Senate or the President, right? Literally. I, I'm, I've either authored or, or co-authored or, or co-sponsored 55 different bills that have been signed into law. All of them have had uh, bipartisan support. So yeah, it's needed and necessary. I do think, you know, the old adage here is that it takes two to tango. And so while you might have Democrats that are able and willing and want to find ways to, to move forward on uh, legislation that is critically important to our constituents, you need to find Republican colleagues that are willing to do that too, and Republican leadership that is willing to meet you uh, at least part of the way. And what we've seen, particularly over the course of the past couple of years, uh, characterized by a Trump administration, is this definition of politics whereby if I win, it means you must lose. 
and if you lose, it means therefore I win. And that zero-sum game makes bipartisanship all that much harder. Um, I think you will remember, um, uh, you won't remember it this way, but when I first got into office, there was uh, a real question as to whether we were going to go right through a debt ceiling. Um, there was a government shutdown looming at the beginning of uh, 2013, and it was Joe Biden that struck a deal with Mitch McConnell because of the personal relationship that they had to, fo to forge ahead and, and get government functioning again. I would hope that uh, Republicans in the Senate, if they're able to hold on to it, which again, I hope, I hope there's a flip, but I would hope they take a, a message from, uh, from this election to actually really engage in a much broader series of reforms that our country is yearning for. Congressman Joe Kennedy, thanks for your insight. Don't be a stranger. Thank you. I'm going to throw it back over to David and Lisa. All right, John Keller, thank you.